Welcome to the Extreme Broadband Engineering product installation training. In this session, we'll explain how to remote power the Infinity Premise amplifiers. In this session, we'll explain what is remote powering, remote powering components, how to configure remote powering, and understanding the importance of using the power inserter. Let's get started. The Infinity Premise amplifiers have two powering options, either local or remote. Local powering is the capability to power the amplifier directly from the DC power pack through a dedicated power port on the amplifier. The dedicated power port only passes DC and not RF. Remote powering is the ability to power the amplifier through one RF output port that has the capability to pass DC along with RF. In this training, We'll focus only on the remote powering. What is remote powering? Remote powering is the ability to power the amplifier from any location where there's a cable and electrical outlet close together. Remote powering allows DC to travel on the same coaxial cable that carries RF, thus eliminating the need to run a dedicated power cable as with local powering. Remote powering saves time and money. Let's look at what components are needed for remote powering. First we'll look at the power pack and power inserter. The power pack converts AC to 12 volts DC. All Infinity Premise amplifiers use 12 volts DC. On the power pack, there's a mounting hole at the top that is used to secure the power pack to the AC outlet with a screw. This is to prevent anyone from accidentally unplugging the power pack, which would result in loss of power to the amplifier. There's a green LED which is a visual indicator that the power pack is working and has 12 volts DC. The power inserter combines DC from the power pack with the RF from the drop which enables DC to flow to the amplifier. The AC-DC power pack and power inserter are a team and work together. The power inserter has three ports. One port is labeled two power supply. This port is connected to the power pack and only passes DC. The port labeled 2 amplifier DC slash RF is connected to the cable going to the amplifier and passes both DC and RF. The port labeled 2 TV slash modem RF output is connected to the end consumer device such as a set top box or modem and only passes RF. The path between the two power supply port and the two amplifier DC slash RF port only passes DC. This path has high isolation and will block all other frequencies. The path between the two amplifier DC slash RF port and the two TV slash modem RF output port will only pass RF and will not allow DC to pass through. This port has very low insertion loss to RF and loses less than 1 dB. Each of the extreme broadband Infinity premise amplifiers has a capability to be local or remote powered. The port label power is for local powering. The RF output port used for remote powering is identified with the label indicating remote power. On the IPA1001, the remote powering port is located on the right. The remote powering port is also the RF output port, so this port passes both RF and DC. For the IPA1002, and the IPA1004, the remote powering port is the second port on the right. If your application calls for using external splitters when remote powering, power passing splitters must be used which will allow DC to pass through to the amplifier. The Infinity Premise modules are available in power passing splitters and connect directly to the remote powering port. This eliminates the need for cable jumpers. Let's look at how remote powering works. Remote powering is the ability to power the amplifier from any location where there's a cable and electrical outlet close together. Typically, this can be any location where cable outlets are located as the end consumer device needs power to work. 
Let's look at how to configure remote powering from one of the outlets. In this example, we'll remote power from the bedroom number two outlet. First, we'll go to the amplifier location on the side of the house and configure the amplifier. In this example, we'll be using the IPA1001 amplifier and we'll be feeding three video services and one data service. Connected to the input port of the amplifier is the VOIP modem module feeding the data service. Remote powering is not capable through the modem module. A power passing three-way splitter is connected to the output remote powering port. Connect the cable going to bedroom number two to the power passing port of the three-way splitter. It's a good practice to install service loss tags on the cable that is carrying DC power. These tags are warning that if the cable carrying DC is disconnected, the cable service will be lost. Wrap a service loss tag around the cable carrying DC power and connect the rest of the cables. No terminator is required on the local power port. Mount the amplifier and splitter into the enclosure. Let's now configure the outlet side. Connect the power inserter's two power supply port to the power pack. Connect the cable from the wall plate to the power inserter's two amplifier DC slash RF port. Connect the cable going to the customer premise equipment to the power inserters two TV slash modem RF output port. Install the other service loss tag onto the cable close to the connector connected to the power inserters two amplifier RF slash DC port. Plug the power pack into the AC outlet and secure the power pack to the AC outlet using a screw through the mounting hole at the top of the power pack. DC now flows to the amplifier. The amplifier is now activated and RF flows to all the outlets. The remote powering configuration is now complete. Let's look at the flexibility to power from any location with remote power. With remote powering, you have the flexibility to power from any video outlet location in the home. To remote power from bedroom number one, move the cable going to bedroom number one to the power passing port of the splitter and install a service loss tag. At the bedroom number one location, configure the power pack and power inserter the same as we did in our example. To remote power from the family room, move the cable going to the family room to the power passing port of the splitter and install a service loss tag. At the family room location, configure the power pack and power inserter the same as we did in our example. Let's discuss the importance of using the power inserter with remote powering. There may be times when you won't need all the splitter outputs of a power passing splitter that's connected to the output of an amplifier and a remote powering port is used just for powering. Even in this case you'll need to use a power inserter and here's why. Electromagnetic interference and radio frequency interference might penetrate the AC-DC power pack. The interference can pass through to the F port and cause the interference with the other ports of the amplifier, splitter, or out to the system. The power inserter is designed to block this interference and only passes the DC through. Always use a power inserter when remote powering. In this example, we're showing the power pack connected directly to the power passing port of the splitter. The interference that could penetrate the power pack travels through the cable directly to the power passing port. The interference will pass this port to the other splitter ports or to the input port where it can travel up the drop to the system or through the passive data port.
The power inserter will block this interference from passing through to the splitter and amplifier. Always use a power inserter when using a remote powering option. And remember to terminate the unused port of the power inserter. Once all cables are installed, use a torque wrench to tighten all connections. Let's review what we've learned in this training on remote powering of the Infinity Premise amplifiers. We explained what is remote powering, identified remote powering components, demonstrated how to configure remote powering, and explained the importance of using a power inserter. Thank you for viewing this product installation training on the Infinity Premise amplifiers. For additional training topics, see our website at www.extreme-broadband.com.